It has officially been one year, one spectacular year, without Android. Now I know what's on everybody's mind. Thousand dollar phone, eleven fifty if you upgrade the store to two fifty six, twelve fifty four out the door. Was it worth it? And the short answer is yes. But how? How could a phone possibly be worth twelve hundred and fifty four dollars after tax? I'll give you a really short answer for that too. One word: stress. I literally wanted to throw my Android phones at a wall, maybe even the floor, just something hard so it would shatter and I would be able to upgrade literally every time I used it because it was a nightmare. Lag. Don't get me started on Snapchat. The picture quality is terrible. The app is slow. It freezes. And that goes for a bunch of apps. And for some reason, every Android phone I've had, after about three months, it just turns off once it hits 15%. It's just gone. What? Now, without going into too much detail, back in the day, I started with Windows Mobile. Check, Windows Mobile, not Windows Phone. This is way back. Then I got the Evo 4G. I kept on that lineup all the way up until the HTC 10. And then eventually I was like, I'm done. These cameras are terrible. All these other phones are better cameras. So I tried a Samsung. I was like, no, after one week. Then I got an LG G4 and I was like, okay, this camera's better. I like the way this feels. And it was cool, you know, for a couple months. And then it went south like every other phone. Then after that one, I got the G5 and that was a total nightmare. But no matter which brand I went to, after two months or so, lag, freeze, stalling, it was a nightmare and it just stressed me out. If I wanted to take a picture, nope, gotta try again. Nope, gotta try again. Wanted to do some multitasking? Oh, you can do split windows, but guess what? They're both gonna be freezing and choppy. And I don't know why it took Android so long to incorporate animations, like when you open up a window, when you close a window. Even now, I don't think they're that great. And every phone, after about two months, I had to factory set it to make it feel new again. Or maybe install a custom ROM, which didn't even last. Nothing I would do made this experience pleasant. So when they announced this new iPhone with a new design, I was like, you know what? How much is a stress-free life worth to me? I was like, $1,000? Sure, if it's stress-free, let's do it. So I bit the bullet, got the iPhone, and haven't looked back. Seriously, using this iPhone 10 every day, actually, what, like 100 times a day, 1,000 times a day? I don't know how many times I'm on it. It's been a dream every time from unlocking it opening apps switching between apps taking pictures it's all so smooth so fluid it just works and something that i'm not sure why android can't get the hang of no matter what carrier you have you put in the sim card it downloads the carrier data and boom you're good to go you have visual voicemail built into the phone app you don't have to download a separate app you don't have to input any apn information it's all good to go why can't Android do that? And even if you get it from a carrier, there's no bloatware. And don't get me started on software updates. Unless you get a Pixel, you're gonna be waiting years to get the new version of Android. I've been spoiled with software updates on iOS. So much so, I actually joined the beta program and I get a software update almost every week. I get to try new features first. It's great. And even running betas, I hardly have any issues. Now that's saying something because betas aren't even ready for the public. This is literally the first time I've ever had a phone where I didn't feel the need to upgrade after only three months to get a better experience. And if you're keeping score, remember it's been one year and I still don't feel the need to upgrade. I'm going to keep this to at least next year. This phone literally feels like the first day I got it. What Android phone can you say that about? I never even had to reset this phone. Not even once. All the animations on iPhone, so smooth. I think they invented animations on smartphones, really. The gestures, those are perfect. I've seen Android Pie came out with gestures and no. Those are not fluid. Those are not natural. I don't know what that flicking thing is that you have to do. It just doesn't look right. Google, try again. And when it comes to apps, they are just so much better, so much more optimized on iPhones. And I don't even know how this is possible really, but even Google apps run better on iPhones. And I still use all my Google apps, by the way. Now the screen, OLED panel. Now I know some people like Samsung screens because they are more saturated, but I don't know. This one is really, really good. I guess it's more natural colors and I'm digging it. It looks amazing. Oh, but it has a notch. Yeah, but that notch actually has a use. Unlike all these Android devices that are throwing in notches with just a camera. And this actually has the most sophisticated 
face ID technology in the game. Nobody's been able to top it yet. Nobody. Not even match it. And it's been out for over a year. Nobody can do it. Why not? And speaking of face ID, a lot of people say they have problems. I haven't had problems. I set it up the first day and boom, it's been working perfectly. If my face is you know, just open, available like it is right now, I'm good to go, 100% of the time. Even if I have my face covered up a little bit, boom, still works. I even went as far as using it with a mud mask on and with one of those sheet masks, not a sheep mask, even though I am a sheep now, a sheet mask, you know, those ones that stick to your face. I didn't think it would work and I forgot I had it on. I forgot about Face ID. I just unlocked my phone. I was like, wait a minute, I have this mask on. How did this work? I mean, sometimes I want to unlock if my face is smothered in a pillow or something, but <laughs> not a big deal. I don't expect it to. It's amazing. And I don't even notice the notch. Literally the first day I got it, it's not even there. It doesn't bother me at all. And the camera, after years and years and years of using crappy HTC cameras, you guys know what I'm talking about if you go far enough back. This camera is amazing. I point, I shoot, I'm good to go. I don't think there's any debate. It is the best overall camera in a smartphone. Sure, the Pixel 3 might have slightly better photos, but look at that video. Sounds like a walkie-talkie. It's jittery, The like, Really? Comparing how smooth the iPhone stabilizes video, even at 4K 60 frames per second, you cannot compare this to any Android phone. Show me one. I have not seen one yet. The iPhone looks great, sounds great, and the photos, spectacular. Now just so I can show you an example of how good this camera is, here's a wide angle shot of me, here's a telephoto shot of me, and here's a portrait shot of me. And just for fun, let's compare it to a DSLR photo of me. I think the iPhone holds its ground. I'm walking down this really jagged path, 4K, 60 frames a second. Listen to the audio, look at all the colors, look at all the detail, look at the stabilization. I'm gonna start running now. I'm running on a path of rocks. <laughs> you guys can see and listen to how good this is. This is hands down the best video quality I have seen on a smartphone. Now the front camera. Here's a portrait mode shot of me. I think it looks pretty good. Now we have a front facing video test under the same conditions. There is no stabilization here, but the quality of this is actually really good. Take a look at this. The sun's directly in my face right now, so I can barely see. And now the sun's behind me, so you guys could see the sun. But I'm still walking on this path. Let me do a little running. All in all, front camera's not bad. It's the best overall camera in a smartphone, period. Seriously, I'm curious, why are you still Team Android? Are you like me being all hard-headed and not wanting to give an iPhone a shot? That's how I was for, I don't even know how long, for years, up until the iPhone 10. And now, I regret not switching sooner. All these years, I just thought smartphones weren't up to the pace of being smooth. And boy, was I wrong. So if you have the chance to get an iPhone 10 at a discount right now, Highly recommended, go get it. Now, if you can't get it for a discount, get the 10s because they're gonna be the same price anyways. But boy, you will not regret it. I mean, how much is your sanity worth to you? Man, let me know why you are team Android or why you are team iOS. Comment down below, let me know all your thoughts. Give this video a thumbs up. Hit that red subscribe button, follow me on social media, and until next time, it's been Roderick. I'm out, come on Apple Sheep, let's do this. I'll catch y'all later. And by the way, this whole video was shot on an iPhone 10.